I said, how come she's coming forward every night to receive Christ? He said, she don't believe that God will forgive her. Well, God's not going to hold back forgiveness. Jesus already paid the price for forgiveness. Jesus already paid the price for the healing of our bodies. We have to have to receive it by faith. Amen. Like she just had to, to understand that all she had to do was receive what Jesus did for her by faith. Yes. Now, it's a lot easier for sin. But some people, it's not easy for sin. You know, the apostle Paul, he, he had done so much against church, the church. He had murdered Christians. He had oversaw the murder of Christians and give, given false testimony to have Christians put to death. He had done that kind of stuff. He said he was the chiefest of sinners. But God had mercy on him. You see, God knew his heart. His heart was really to serve God. And so God got his attention one day on the road to Damascus. And he, he gave his life to God that day. Hallelujah. Well, glory. Turn with me to Mark chapter 10, verse 17. Now, let me finish this up here. Whosoever, well, save his life shall lose it. Whosoever shall lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what does it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world but lose his own soul? What's your soul worth? What is, you know, this life is so fast. I mean, life just goes by fast. I'm getting ready to turn 62 years old, getting on Social Security. <laughs> Hallelujah. Your life goes by fast. Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man come, shall come in the glory of his Father with his, <coughs> with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. In other words, I mean, if you do evil... You're going to get reward for evil. If you do good, you're going to get reward for good. I thought we don't, we're not saved by works. You know you're not delivered by works, by your works. It's by the power of Jesus you're delivered. Amen. Saved means delivered. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Jesus came to save us from sin. Amen. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So we can walk in that hold. We can walk in that deliverance from sin. We can walk every day we have to walk in yeah. Why? Because the devil's after you every day. We have an adversary, the devil. He goes about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. We've got to resist him steadfast in faith. We've got to submit ourselves to God. That means obey God and resist the devil, and he'll flee from us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I turn to Mark chapter 10, verse 7. It's talking about Jesus again. And when he, Jesus, was gone forth into the way, did I get that, Mark? What is it? Mark chapter 10, verse 17. 17, Mark 10, 17. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. And when he, Jesus, was gone into the way, there came one running and kneeled to him and asked, Good master, what shall I do, say do, do. that I may inherit eternal life? And then Jesus said this, Thou knowest the commandments. Now Jesus said in, in Luke chapter 16, verse 16, He said, The law and the prophets were until John the Baptist. He said, Since that time the kingdom of God is preached, and every man must press into it. He said, Every man presseth into it. Another, on one of the other gospels it says, And the violent take it by force. In other words, these things of God, we have to press into them, we have to take them by faith, we have to seize them by faith. We have to to make them ours by faith. They've been given to us, freely given to us. Amen. So Jesus said, Thou knowest the commandments, do not commit adultery. Do not kill, that means commit murder. Do not steal, do not bear false witness. Defraud not, honor thy father and thy mother. Those are some big commandments. Jesus said, if you do these things, you can have eternal life. And he answered and said to him, Master, all these things have I observed from my youth. And when, and all these things have I observed from my youth. And then Jesus, beholding him, loved him. This guy, he's trying to live a right life. But he beheld him. And when he beheld him, Father God showed him something about this man. 
Even though he said that all those things were things that you would love your neighbor as yourself. However, he didn't put God first in his life. And God knew, Jesus knew about that by the Holy Ghost. That's a word of knowledge from the Holy Ghost. Jesus operated the gifts of the Holy Ghost as a man. Amen. He operated as a man Thank filled you. with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. So Jesus, knowing his heart, he said, Jesus, behold him and said unto him, One thing thou lacks. There's just one thing you lack. Just one thing. Go thy way and sow whatsoever thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. And come and take up the cross and follow me. The man was a very rich man. He was a rich young ruler. And he was very sad at that saying and went away grieved for he had great possessions. You see, he loved his stuff more than he loved God. He loved, now, now he had been good. He'd been a good man. But he loved his stuff more than he loved God. There, anything that we love above God, God requires us to give that up. He requires us to be givers. Yes. I mean, we should be givers anyhow. But, but God requires us to lay, let go of anything that we, that we put above God. That's why God put Abraham to the test with his son. He knew how much God, Abraham loved his son Isaac. And so God told him, he said, Isaac, through Isaac, your seed will be, your descendants will be. And then one day came, and his boy got kind of, he got kind of grown up somewhat. He said, I want you to take Isaac to the mountain. I want you to sacrifice him on the mountain. And Abraham said, okay, I'll do that. Why did he say that? The Bible tells us he said that because he knew that God had promised him that it would be through Isaac as seed would be. So he knew if he sacrificed Isaac according to what he said, according to what God said, that God would raise him from the dead. That's, right. That's pretty miraculous, that kind of faith. That's pretty right. Matter of fact, when they were going up the mountain, they had some other guys with them. And him and Isaac went on. They said, we're going on up. You guys wait right here. We'll be back. He said, we'll be back. And so they got up there. And his son Isaac said, where's the sheep? We got the wood and all this stuff. But where's the sheep? He said, God will provide it. Well, he tied up Isaac and laid him on the wood. He raised the knife, getting ready to kill him. And the, an angel stayed his hand. And there was a there was a sheep up there, a goat or whatever up there in the bushes. And God said, Don't do it. But see, he proved to God that even his son was not more important than God was. We have we have to be willing to lay everything down for God. Now, now, now this rich young ruler, he may have just said, he may have said, Okay, I'll do that. He may not have required him to do that. But he had to be willing to do it. Yeah. Hallelujah. Verse 22, and he was sad at that saying, went away grieved, for he had great possessions. And Jesus looked round about and said to his disciples, How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the, the kingdom of God? His disciples were astonished when he said that. They were astonished at his words. But Jesus answered again and explained himself a little better and said unto them, Children, how hard is it for them that trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of God? You see, it's not having money that's the problem. The money, the problem is when money has us. Yeah, that's right. When riches has us, that's when we trust in riches above trusting in God. That's when there's a problem. Yes. When we trust our, our, our stuff more than we trust God. That's a problem. Yes. When we put God first in our life, then, then God's able to, to be Lord, truly Lord over our life. He's able to lead us, guide us, use us. He's able to bless us. He's able to, yes. to pour his favor out upon us. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. So when we walk with God, we're, we're totally sold out to God. Yes. Enoch, he walked with God. He pleased God. He obeyed God. Amen. He had a heart for God. Yes. He was so holy and righteous and walked in such a way with God that God just took him to heaven. Thank you, Lord. Isn't that amazing? Amen. That's kind of wild. Noah, 
He had a heart for God. He was a just man. He was a holy man. He was perfect in all his generations. He was a preacher of righteousness. He spent 100 years building the ark. He lived to be 950 years old. He was 600 years old after the flood. After the flood started. After the flood finished. He was 500 years old. I, I, the flood started, I think, when he was 600 years old. It took him 100 years to build the ark. That's something. I can't imagine preaching 100 years and not winning any souls. But you know, the thing is, his reward will be great. Because he obeyed God. We get rewarded not for our results, but for our obedience. It's not for our results, but obedience. The Bible says obedience is greater than sacrifice. No matter how big a sacrifice I make, my obedience is the most important thing. Yes, that's right. Hallelujah. A couple months back, I was... I was, a Lord woke me up in the middle of the night and told me to pray for somebody. It was another minister. And so I interceded and prayed for him in the middle of the night, about 3 o'clock in the morning. And then I went back to sleep, and when I woke up in the morning, the Lord spoke clear to me. He said, I want you to give them $547. I said, wow, $547, God. I said, that's kind of an odd amount of money. I said, that's kind of strange. But I, but I knew it was God. So I called the minister up. And I said, the strangest thing happened to me. Now, I said, the strangest thing happened to me this morning. I said, I actually texted him, I think. I, I messaged him on Facebook. I said, the strangest thing happened to me this morning. I woke up, and the Lord told me to give you guys $547. I said, is there something significant about that? I said, it just seems like a strange amount. And she said, yes, that's exactly what we need. That's the exact amount we need. Isn't that something? And then her husband called me up and he said, that's the exact amount we need. Isn't that something? Sometimes, you know, I could say, no, I'll give him, I'll give him 600. No, the Lord told me to give him $547. That was more important than giving them 600. Yes. Why? Because that was the exact amount they needed. And they can know that's God. Yes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They know that's God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We just need to obey God. Amen. Hallelujah. 